Heroku announced about the removal of their free product plans, which impacts free Heroku Dinos, Postgres and Redis servers. If you have an app deployed on free Heroku Dinos, you have to switch to the new Echo Dinos, which costs $5 per month. Otherwise, if you still want to run your site projects for free, there are 4 great Heroku alternatives to deploy your apps in 2023. We will go through each of them, compare, deploy a sample app and decide which one is the best for your purposes. The first free alternative to Heroku is Fly.io. Fly.io is a hosting provider very similar to Heroku and it is super easy to deploy an app using their CLI. They have free allowances and if your app doesn't exceed these limits that you see here, you can use their services for free. So open up the application which you want to deploy. If you just want to follow along, here is my simple Node.js application for demonstrating the deployment. I will leave a link to this in the description. The first thing we need to do for deploying our app is to install the FlyCTL, which is a CLI for managing apps on Fly.io. If you are on macOS and you have Brew installed, you can install this CLI via Brew with this command. Otherwise, here is the script that you need to run to install the FlyCTL. For Linux users, use this script in your terminal. And if you are on Windows, you need to run this install script on PowerShell. Let's go ahead and install it from the terminal. And it is successfully installed. The next step is to sign up or log in to Fly.io. If you already have an account, use this command to log in from the terminal. Otherwise, use the sign up command to sign up and log in. I don't have an account yet, so I will use this sign up command here. I will use GitHub for signing up. Once you sign up, it will ask you for card details. Although you can choose to try it for free without providing credit card, it will be required for deploying your app, so it is better to provide a credit card here. It won't charge you at all if you don't exceed their free allowance limits. Step 3 is the deployment. After you signed up and provided card info or logged in if you had an account already, the last step is to deploy your app using the CLI. So let's run this command in our terminal. If you have a docker file, it will automatically detect it. If you don't, it will detect a Node.js application and start the deployment. Next, it asks for an app name. I will leave this empty and it will generate one for me. Choose the region where you want to deploy, whichever is closest to your users. It asks if I want to set up a PostgreSQL database, I will choose no. Would we like to set up a Redis database? No. Would we like to deploy now? Yes. And it starts to build an image, after which it will spin up the container on the server. So it failed on first try for me, with error failed due to unhealthy allocations. If this is also the case for you, what I find out is you have to set your internal port to 8080 because it is also set to 8080 in the fly toml file which is generated by CLI. So update the port to 8080 and run the deploy command again. And this time it is successfully deployed. To verify that it worked, go to your dashboard Select the application that you just deployed and open up the link provided under hostname. And our application is successfully up and running. Also, you might have environmental variables in your code. These can be added here under the secrets tab in your dashboard. Next one is data. Data is a free cloud platform where you can build and deploy your ideas without worrying about server costs and without providing any credit card information. To start using their services, we need to sign up to Data Cloud. Visit their website and click on Join Data to create an account. 
Fill in the necessary information here and click sign up. After this, it will send you a confirmation link via email. Once you confirm your email, you will be redirected to this page. While we are here, let's create our first project. Click on this Create First Project button, choose your region and click Create. Next, we need to install the Data CLI, which is the tool that is used to deploy your Node.js or Python applications to Data Micros. From here, you need to copy the install script based on your operating system. Let's install the CLI from our terminal. After it's installed, you need to close and reopen the terminal so that it recognizes the data command now. After you install the data CLI, next step is to log into data. For that, type data login in your terminal. This will redirect you to the browser and log you in. Now that we are logged in, we need to create a data micro. Before creating a micro, there are two things that data requires for Node.js applications to be deployed on their servers. First thing is, the entry point file must be named as index.js. If you named it server.js or something else, you need to change it to index.js and also update the main entry file in your package.json. And the second thing is that we are required to add the module exports at the bottom of our entry file, which is index.js, so that data recognizes our application. After updating the project based on their requirements, you need to navigate to the parent directory of your project. And from the parent directory, we need to run this command, data new dash dash node to specify that our application is in node and the micro name. Note that micro name must be exactly the same name as the project folder, which is on your computer. So you can see that the micro has been created and we have a hidden .data folder in our project. Whenever you need to redeploy your API, just run data deploy from your project's terminal. Let's change something small and try it out. As you can see, it has been deployed. Run data details to get the URL of your micro and open up that URL to verify that it worked. As you can see, it has been deployed and running under this endpoint. Next one is Render. This is the most similar service to Heroku, which offers a free plan on its pricing page. They offer services for static websites, web services, PostgreSQL databases, Redis and cron jobs. The sign-up process is pretty straightforward. Just select your GitHub or GitLab account and you are ready to deploy. You can deploy a Node.js application on Render in just a few clicks. Go to your dashboard and click on the New button. We are going to select the web service in this case. Give the Render access to the repository which you want to deploy. Find your GitHub repository here and click Connect. Choose a name for the application. Give the root directory to it. Environment, here you can deploy it with or without Docker. In this first example, I'm going to choose Docker. Select your region and branch, plan type, and in the advanced tab, I will give the Docker file path to it. Dot slash Docker file. And that's it. Click on Create Web Service. It starts to clone the repository, and now it builds the Docker image. This might take about 5 minutes to complete. You can see it's deployed and running. To verify that it worked, open up the URL provided by Render. And we can see that our application is up and running. You can check the application logs here in the Logs tab. If you have environmental variables, add them here. And you can check out your latest deployments in the Events tab. Next, we have Cyclic a cloud platform focused on full-stack applications. The best thing about Cyclic is that it has no sleep, even with free tier, meaning that apps do not have to sleep like in Heroku or Render. It's because there are no servers, each app is deployed entirely on serverless cloud infrastructure. Code is deployed as soon as its GitHub repository has been connected to Cyclic. 
Cyclic will use the GitHub default branch to pull the repository contents. Note that Cyclic launches your app by calling npm start, which means you have to have a start command in your package.json file. After you sign up to Cyclic, you need to create a new app and for that, click on the deploy button. Go to link your own tab and search for the repository from your GitHub account. You may need to give access to Cyclic for the first time. After that, click connect. Here you can see it installs the dependencies, deploys the app and gives you the URL where you can access the application. So let's go to that URL. And as you can see, our application is successfully deployed. After the deployment, there are a few things you can do next. Go to the applications dashboard. You can monitor the application in the logs tab here. Check out the incoming requests and responses from your API. You can add a custom subdomain here and Cyclic will give you the subdomain.cyclic.app custom domain. Change the main branch here if necessary. This will automatically deploy your app once you have a new commit or pull request in that branch. And if you have any environmental variables, you can add them here. In conclusion, the most similar service to Heroku is Render, and it's the easiest platform to migrate to if you already had a deployed app on Heroku. However, Render will shut down your free instances after 15 minutes of inactivity as we had in Heroku. If you'd like your app to be always running, you need to deploy it on other platforms. Data is a better alternative in this case, if your app is in Node.js or Python and you are willing to follow their strict rules, you can have your app deployed there for free forever. Cyclic is very similar to Data. Cyclic is serverless which means that even with a free tier, your apps are ready on demand immediately. They also support only JavaScript and Python runtimes. Fly.io has much wider support for languages and is very good alternative if you are willing to provide your credit card details to get started. They don't charge you until you reach their free allowance limits. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.